this is a um, hello set in geometry. As a storyteller, I'm going to talk about the three C's that are going to kill your brand. And for those, uh, and of course, C also stands for Chiara, which is my name, and it's a branded presentation. What you are going to see. For those who knows me as the Joomla brand manager, I'm going to talk also about the Joomla brand. Although doesn't contain any C, but I am the Joomla brand manager, and uh, some of you maybe want to hear about me uh, talking about the brand. So. First question, I want to test my audience and their preparation on the subject. Uh, many, how many of you know about brand? What brand? What is a brand? Yes? Tell me. Mm. No. Mm. Not really, but close. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Almost, almost close, yeah. So I, I, I give you some hint, okay, so that I can guide you. A brand is not your logo, it's not a logo. It's not, what logo is what we call, the designer call the trademark, okay. It's not even a symbol, what Nike use, the swoosh. It's not even that one, or the apple. And it's not even a corporate identity system, which is something that we use to, that w the companies use to protect their uh, logo, trademark, and, with the, and, um, and copyright it. So a brand is something more simple, or kind of. A brand is not what you say it is, but it's what they say it is. What, where you means you company, and they stand for they customers. This is not my quote. It's a quote by Martin O'Meyer from his book, The Brand Gap which I advise you, if you are a fan of brand and you want to learn more, to read it. It's a really small book, really nice one. Um, so with this sentence, it means that it's the first time the company they rely on what customers. Is brand is synonymous of reputation. So it's your reputation in the mind of your customers. So it's not your logo. It's the logo is how they, they perceive you. It's not your identity, it's how you communicate, how you are consistent, how you, your, brand, your brand look. It's not even your symbol. So it's a little bit, little bit more complex, at the same time, easy. So <coughs> a brand is also the gut feeling. A gut feeling a person has about um, a company, a service, or a product. So for example, if you see McDonald's, this is McDonald's. What kind of feeling, gut feeling you have, emotion, what ad adjectives you have to define it? <laughs> I had the same answer when I tried my presentation. <laughs> or? Best friend fried. Best friend fried. But again, kind of shitty food, <laughs> as Pete said. So, and it's a, well, I say childish, and you can say also happiness, and somebody, but the gut feeling is more or less the same. And it's stranger for a brand that is value in 2014, 37.4 billion. So we say the shitty food ever, but uh, I mean, come on, this brand is really high valued. Or um, what the feeling you have about Nike? Uh, <laughs> Sorry? Mm-hmm. But is there an other feeling you have? Sprint, yeah. So more or less we all have the same kind of feeling about Nike and Apple. Society. Yeah, so to be innovative or what else? Sorry? Trust. Trust, yes. So we more or less have the same gut feeling about a brand. And when you have, uh, when all the people see your brand with the same emotion, you can say that you don't have any more just a logo, but you really have a brand. So, why are brands so hot today? We all talk about brand. I mean, I am now in Joomla since uh, January, and they told me, oh, you're going to be the brand manager. Oh. And I was like, okay, that's scary, because uh, why do you want a brand? 
and uh, it's not really clear yet. We are finding out, but uh, uh, well, it's uh, it's almost clear. But uh, we are working on that. The problem is why a company like you, small or big company, want to have a brand. Most of the client comes to me and they want a brand. It's not something that you really can build. You, I can build a logo. I can build a corporate identity system, but the reputation is something you build with time. So. I tell you now a story because I like telling stories. So once upon a the time, there were factories. We are back in the Industrial Revolution. And the competition was between machines. That means that the, the company that has more machines was able to win and produce more and have more factories. When the barrier competition of machines, where most of the company had machines and factories, the barrier competition uh, raised to the capital. That means they had more product, to they, they had more money to invest on in their company. They could train their, comp their employees. They could uh, invest in more machines and so on. Where, uh, so the best company who had access to more capital was able to win. And when most of the companies start to have capital and have money, and uh, so the competition raised again to patent your product. You were afraid that your product was copied by somebody else because all were able to have money and produce more. So again, the barrier competition raised and they start to trademark their products. Coca-Cola is one of them. Their formula is still, they say it's secret. For so many people have already spoiled it, but they say that it's secret. At least it's trademarked. Um, so we move to intellectual property. But today, this is not enough anymore. Today, everything is the mind of your customer. So what a company has to do is to uh, defeat the mental barrier of the customer, to get inside the customer mind and be sure that they stay in the customer mind. How? We are going to discover it. So <coughs> now it's the first time we'll say that the company uh, cannot really control anymore what uh, they don't have really control or, or, they or uh, the perception of it. So they don't really have, uh, um, they cannot really control what the customer says. They can slightly control it through um, the relationship they build with the customers, but they must be really careful. So um, the, the title of this presentation is How to Kill Your Brand. And, but really, do you want to be a brand killer? <laughs> nah, I don't think so. Well, I hope <laughs> you want to identify a brand killer and be sure you're not one of, of them already. So this is the really critical part of my presentation. So if I'm good enough, you will remember how to spell my name correctly. So the, in Italian, if I'm really, really good, you will learn how to, um, the three C that kill your brand. But Im if I'm brilliant, you will learn the three C, the three golden C that keep your brand alive. So I have a few tests for you. We are going to, I want you to make it, uh, to share this with you. So take one and one and make it run. And I have some pencils here so you can use it later. So yeah, I hope you slowly you're going to have your own page and paper to sign and a your pencil. So so let's start. The first thing that kills your brand is clutter. <coughs> we live in a world that is full of logos. They tell us what to eat, they tell us what to drink, and uh, also they tell us how to dress, to be cool, 
and what we should smell and what kind of product, what kind of phone we should buy and what kind of application we should have in, the, in those uh, phones. And uh, brands are everywhere and our mind has to deal with it. And the only way that our mind does this is making like a, a barrier around it and make it fil and filter information. So how can you be sure that your brand is not, that your company is not creating a new noisy message? That your company is actually, the message that your company produces, the product, the service you're creating is not, it's uh, reaching the right, the right audience. Brands are everywhere. We are, com we are continuously bombed and they are always also in really unexpected places like Ladies Gaga era. So um, how can we really defeat a, a, a cluster marketplace that, wha that we live today in, um, in, um, with, uh, and be sure that our company is visible? Only defeating clutter with, what's this? Clarity. Clarity means be distinct, make the radical differentiation. That means find a white space in the marketplace and fill it. But be careful when you do so, because it's not really easy. For example, in 1993, Pepsi, you know, Pepsi is always trying to fight against Coca-Cola, and they, they, they haven't win. They have done blind tests, but they were working well when people were uh, blind and they tasting Coca-Cola, and they taste past Pepsi, and they preferred it through, uh, they preferred it uh, on uh, the Coke, because but they were tasting the, the Pepsi with blind eyes, so they, wouldn't, they couldn't be able to see which one was Coca-Cola. But nobody goes to the supermarket and buy uh, products with, with their band on their eyes. They, we all see brands and we take it what we like. It's so Coca-Cola is still the winner in the marketplace, and Pepsi is the second. So Pepsi in 1993 spot what they thought was a um, white market, uh, a, white, uh, a white space. Uh, which was uh, created a Pepsi Coke that was white. They thought that in this case they could make uh, a Coke that for thirsty people. But people, if they are thirsty and uh, they choose Coke because, uh, okay, they can be thirsty, but because also it's fun and because they like it, and they really don't need a white Pepsi. Because if they want something white with bubbles, they prefer spring waters. Simple. So it was a, a completely fail for the brand. In 1993, they just remove the product from the shelf. It was called Crystal Pepsi, yeah. a completely fail. So when you spot the new, the marketplace, the this white space, be sure it's a real white space. <coughs> Clarity answer to three, com three important questions. Answer to the question, who are you? Who is, who are you company? What do you do? And why does it matter? So it's a nice because usually companies are really able to answer to the first two questions. So who are you is, uh, what's the raw energy inside your company? What gets you up in the morning and say, let's go to work? This is the, the, the who are you. What do you do? Answer to the question, what's your core purpose? What's your business beyond making money? And for example, Google. Google is a famous company. They are great in what they are doing and uh, what they do is the core business is organizing and sharing information. So th all their products from the search engine to Google Plus follow this philosophy. Why does it, oh sorry, can we start again? Why does it matter? Why does it matter is uh, the most difficult question because here you're asking to your client, you're asking to yourself why are you the best and why people have to choose you? And this is the question that not really, not many companies can answer. And if you have a compelling answer to those questions as a company or as a brand or even as a small freelancer, you can go out from this room because I don't have anything to teach you. So I give you also this chance. But if you don't, let's stay together and we we'll discover how to create a winning <coughs> brand. I'm going to show you and to answer to those questions for some of uh, some companies. This is Vespa. Do you know about, about Vespa, do you? Yeah. So Vespa is an Italian brand. They produce motorcycles. And me and my boyfriend have Vespa. 
We travel with Vespa. We don't want any big bike or Harley Davidson or so. Um, because we really enjoy the, the driving our Vespa and traveling with our Vespa. We like also the feeling of other people looking at us on our Vespa. So it's uh, all about lifestyling, okay? So let's answer those questions for Vespa. Vespa is the only motorcycle manufacturer that produces original and timeless motorbike. Why? Why does it matter? It matters for people who want to ride an icon of style. So this is what sets Vespa in a completely different place in the marketplace, and in a completely, completely different place among other motorbikes. Let's try with another brand. Do you know Lomo, the camera Lomo? Lomo is uh, the Russian camera, the analog. It's, uh, they, they actually support the analog photography around the world still today. They experienced a really low, they, they experienced almost they were about to fail and they were raised again lately. And uh, you can imagine why they were experienced to, to fail because it's a market leads by it's a marketplace lead by digital camera. I mean, everybody wants to have a digital camera that's easy. You can transport, you can mm, move your information, your your images straight to the web, share it with your your friends. So a completely, completely new philosophy. So Lomo has to defeat this trend, trendy, and how they did it? They involve a, com a community. They create a community behind their products. And this is how they make their products uh, still today survive. They go on producing innovative, um, innovative products for their cameras, new cameras, new films. You can make a, a, your picture in different kind of color because they have different filters. And the answer, let's see how they answer to those questions. So um, Lomography is a company, a global community. It's not a product anymore. They spread the love for analog photography. And why does it matter? It matters to people that ignite um, a new style of artistic and experimental photography. So you understand that we are talking about community. We are talking about a product that's completely different and they engage the community and support the love of the community for analog photography. It's a completely way to reverse. I mean, the product is built for the community to help them express their love for photography. So, and now, to you, as a community, as a part of the community, or as users, Joomla users, what makes Joomla the only one? This is the Martin O'Meyer statement, uh, only in a statement. It's an exercise he does. Uh, Martin O'Meyer is a consultant, a uh, brand consultant, and uh, this is an exercise he does to big brands, uh, to brand builders, and asking them what makes their brand uh, the only one. I want you to do this uh, exercise. I will give you a really a small minutes uh, doing that. Um, I want you to fill the blank space. Joomla is the only, means uh, you answer the, uh, you, uh, the blank space here stands for the category, so what it is. That does something. So something that makes Joomla the only one. So I give you really few time and uh, to fill it. And if you cannot make it, it's okay. Uh, we will, uh, and we can also discuss it later. So. Um, So <coughs> some of you want to share what 
with me what they what you have right? Sure. Yeah. yeah? Great Frank, I love oh, you. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. Line, Thank you. So interesting. Joomla is the only CMS that empowers everyone to accelerate uh, to accelerate self uh, no, oh I lost you. I Self I and to evolve <laughs> the two options. Oh, read it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but <laughs> 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 Joomla is the only CMS that empowers everyone to accelerate himself and to evolve, evolve uh, the new CS. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. I want to tell you that I'm not right quest uh, right answer, okay? I, I want your honest sentence. Joomla is the so this is Diane. Joomla is the only project that is entirely volunteer based. That's what makes could be an only nice statement. And also what Frank wrote is an only nice statement. Something else? Somebody else want to share? Yes, Eric. Oh. oh. <laughs> wow. Joomla is the only community that combines creativity with technical excellence. Really nice, I like it. Thank you. I, if you can feel it uh, also later, we, we are going to have to make it happen later this uh, evening. So if you want to join us in this afternoon, it would be nice to discuss it together. Yes, this could be all, all in a statement. And I also did my homework and I wrote the following. Joomla is the only worldwide project that builds a community around digital publishing and collaboration. This is not something they really invented. I just reformulate our mission and vision, the mission and vision of our organization. I'm not saying that's the, the, the only statement we could have, but uh, it could be one of them as all of this. We had to find our statement. And most of all, we have to answer to the three questions. So I answered for that for you. And uh, again, Joomla is the only contributor driven project. So the project that Jan was writing that develops award-winning web solutions. I'm not talking anymore, anymore about CMS. I want to be wide. As Google said about organi organized information, I say like web solutions. So it could be anything that help people to build secure, easy to use and powerful digital application. So in this way, I just open up the market and I, and I not talking anymore about customer, about talking about I'm not talking about CMS, I'm talking about the project uh, that is a contributor driven and uh, that makes uh, um, a product that supports the, the, the support, sorry, that the support that the willing to build easy to use uh, web applications. So I hope you will come to the <laughs> to make it happen and we can work that together. And uh, who has filled the paper? Please leave it here. I really need them. So. We have seen the, the um, clarity thing. Yes? Oh, you have yours. No, 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 sure. No, I, I say that these are not the right answers. Mm -hmm. yeah, all the answers that are there are stuff in the code that you use to do a better thing. Why should you be bothered? Yes. Why should you feel at the moment? At this yeah, point? but the problem is uh, when you have this only, I mean, okay. the only in a statement doesn't mean you are the only one. The only in a statement s serves to the company as a base uh, to define the core uh, business in order that you follow that and you never you never uh, lose your track w as a company. That's the thing. So onlyness doesn't mean um, that you are the only one in the marketplace. Onlyness is what is only for you as a company. So as a core business, Google, there are many search engines that are same things as Google does. So they are not the only one. But what they do is completely different because they are inside, so inside in what they think and they answer so well to the three questions that we saw before that they, they become the only one. You don't know any other search engine except Google. 
for example. And people today, and they do so well what they do, because they have this core business and they follow it. So these three questions are not important in terms of only one in the world, but to make a radical differentiation is to have those questions answered, have an only in a statement, and uh, follow it, you know, and uh, follow it as a compass. Could be, but uh, but uh, yes, but the brand, but to company builders, yeah. but to brand builders, you don't tell them who, in what you are the best. You tell them what you can offer, and nobody else can do that. So, and then you make them focus on something that they, because what are you the best? They can tell you a thousand things, but if you say the only thing good that you do that nobody else does, they will focus on that. So. But doesn't mean that nobody else does in terms of uh, nobody else in the marketplace. But you do the best among all the others. And it's the only thing you do the best and you focus on that. So um, it's a slightly different, but uh, I understand. But the, the it's difficult to find that, that, uh, that thing. It's uh, if more easy if you find that, uh, uh, if you find what uh, keeps you up and what doesn't matter most to your customer and your company. So more or less. So, but we can discuss also later, maybe, and uh, make it happen. And uh, because I want to hear from you, it's really important for me to hear from the community. So, the first C, the second C is confusion. As we said before, the last thing we have to do is to make confusion, to create confusion in our customers' mind. Um, do you know this brand? German people must know it, for sure. But also, wor it's a worldwide brand, so. So this is Osram. Do you see something strange in this logo? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, anything else you see strange in this logo? Is it's their logo. I tell you that. It's their logo. Okay, <laughs> the bulbs. It's a down, yeah. Well, I'll tell you something. There's not anything wrong in this logo. It's just old. And it's old because in 2001, Osram, the manufacturer light bulbs, um, decided to change their logo. What they did was uh, to uh, rotate the lamp 180 degrees. And uh, because they thought that their core business has slightly changed, they don't produce any more light bulbs, but they produce a smart solution, smart lighting system solution. That's great, but the problem is that most of the customers and retailers were not really aware about this change. So they were going on, this is a picture I took in Athens, and there are many logos used in the same way. They, they were not aware because the change was really blind, but it was really blunt, and they couldn't really understand the difference. I mean, if I'm a retailer, I just want to tell people that I, I sell Osram, and they don't really care that the logo has changed. So they were going on trending uh, and going on creating sign with their old logo. And also from a perception, a customer perception, was a kind was they were selling to the side, oh, look, because this is what I did. I used to work for Osram Italy many years, and I know how Osram logo is. And they were like, oh, look, they have used, a, they, they turned the bulb upside down, but it was not. It was just the old logo. Or again, me waiting at um, Malpensa Airport was looking for an Apple product to buy. Could you spot the Apple product, the Apple logo <coughs> here? No, but I can read it. You can read it, yeah. They spelled it out. Could you imagine that this is not working because uh, it took me a while to, to, see this, the l to see if they had the pro Apple product because in my mind, Apple is what you see in your computer, just the Apple symbol. And it took me a while that they spell it out with a Vatican Neue light, which uh, I think uh, in this moment, even Steve Jobs is moving his thumb, <laughs> feeling uncomfortable. <laughs> so again, the brand, when the brand is so strong, and it's, uh, it's create like a mental uh, form, a mental, uh, mental sh um, you have a mental idea of what a brand looks like. And when you spot it like that, you will not recognize it. You wouldn't even trust if they have authorized Apple product anymore. So 
you understand that uh, identity is uh, one of the important things to work on. And uh, these are pictures of uh, real Harley Davidson riders. These are taken by Sasha Goldberg. He's a French photographer. He decided to make picture of uh, portraying new real Harley Davidson uh, customers. And those pictures are more or less the same. They portray people like this or like this. And I wish Harley Davidson had seen that picture where in 1990 they come out with a perfume and aftershave. Could you imagine these people using that in the morning, this kind of product? Not really. So when they have a brand that's so strong in something, don't try to alienate, alienate your core customers. So avoid confusion in what your brand is, how it looks, and, how and what is philosophy behind it. Confusion can be defeated with coherence. Be coherent. So when you have found your only next statement, when you answer to the three questions we saw before, you have to keep your brand, stick to it. If you want to be, if you want to be able to answer to a really simple question, if you are remarkable, there are really few brands that can do that. <coughs> Could you spot? Could you tell me which one is? The? What? Of course. Why Coca-Cola can dare so much creating advertising like this without even exposing the logo big? Why? Because they've always been like that. Always have been coherent the way they, they, they show themselves. So what they did in 2013 was to take the logo, cut it in a really in small, uh, in taking part of the logo, sorry, turn it up and um, make a smile out of it and launch a campaign called Open Happiness. Just Coca-Cola could dare so much, you know, going out with just the bottle uh, profile and the logo that's not looking even as a logo anymore. Bottle, exactly. A lot of, <laughs> the brand is, yes, exactly, where the brand is not even anymore, the brand is, the logo itself, but it's also the product itself, sure. Or, uh, again, this is diesel. Diesel has a, is a really revol revolutionary brand because in they have been always quite provocative. They, they, start they start producing jeans, but their brand is uh, not just producing jeans, it's all about the philosophy uh, behind, uh, which is called living for living successful. So what they did in, uh, back in 2010 was to launch a new campaign called Be Stupid. Everybody's telling you to be different, be smart, and they come out with a brand, with a campaign, a completely new campaign, say, be stupid. Um, among diesel people, the be stupid was a, a value, was a value to a synonym of uh, being yourself, be who you are, don't pretend to be somebody else. And this is why, and, and th this was making this campaign exceptional, and all the diesel customers were feeling the be stupid as a value. They're feeling proud to be stupid. I mean, uh, this is what the power of the brand is. So, let's go back to Joomla. Joomla has a specific identity, which uh, we more or less use it correctly. Uh, it's the brand mark, it's the logotype, and it's the tagline. The logotype with the, mar um, the exclamation mark and the tagline with the three dots before it. And only if we use it correctly, we can have the register mark and then we can protect our brand. They are not the 5,000 shades of blue that we have on our website. It's how we protect and how we keep, uh, we are consistent in the way we use the four colors that, that are assigned to our brand mark. And finally, is the experience people has using our product, our services, and going and getting involved in our community that makes Joomla um, different and make us coherent as a brand. So, we are almost uh, at the end of the three C, and uh, one of the C's, uh, the last one, is coldness. We have built our brand, we have a specific identity, we have, we have a, a clear identity, we know our philosophy, we know our products, we are proud and we, 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 um, we are proud of our products and service, and uh, now it's uh, how can we communicate? How can we engage people? Because the companies, nothing, we have learned the companies nothing if it doesn't have a cu customers to take care of. We have a real big problem when company 
comes to create, um, try to justify themselves or talk to customer with logic. Because we say before that brands are built in gut on gut feelings. So it would the feeling you have. So they are like, people treat brands like person. So if you see a person the f in the f uh, the first the for the first time, you are try to guess what, who they are. And if you like them, you want to get along with them. It works the same way with a brand, exactly the same way. So be careful when you try to be cold or uh, your brand is not emotional enough. To th December 2013, UPS, a great company, courier everywhere in the world, they are known with the tagline that say, we, uh, we heard uh, logistic. And in December 2013, they announced that uh, packages slated for December 24 won't be arrived until after holiday. Sorry. This was the message. Could you imagine thousand thousand customers that have given their packages, their gifts for their people far away, for people that they love and they want to remember for the Christmas time, and then will never receive the package. This was not the message that will make UPS, the brand, the love logistic. So it was a great disappointment for uh, the customers. Or again, Barilla, it's a really famous brand. In September 2013, Barilla, which sells pasta around the world with the tagline, the choice of Italy, um, make a really, a really thoughtful statement. Guido Barilla um, released, uh, uh, went to a famous radio in Italy saying that Barilla will never use couple, a gay couple for their uh, advertising. Y after one minute, not even, probably one second, a campaign, a boycott campaign against Barilla start on Twitter, Facebook. Videos were everywhere, boycott Barilla in every languages, everywhere in the world. It was a big mistake. That, uh, it was a big mistake that Guido Barilla made at that point. After three days, Guido Barilla went out with a video apologizing to have made such a, uh, such a thoughtful uh, um, uh, statement. So this is the power of the brand. They rely on customers. And uh, so how we defeat coldness? We defeat coldne coldness caring with care, caring about our customers cheering them and uh, create an environment where they feel welcome all the time and, ev and often and involving them in our brand, in our community, in whatever is uh, the, world, the brand world and our company and in, in in whatever they use our, uh, our products <coughs> or service. So for example, um, this is a really important uh, statement that Donald um, Norman Donald have done in his book, Emotional uh, Design. And his book, um, I talked about this book last year in the Journal Day in Netherlands when I talk about typography and emotion. And I say that emotion is actually the only way that, that leads people to make decisions. <laughs> if they, if there is a part of our brain that responds to emotion, and they've uh, scientifically proved that if this part of the brain is broken, people cannot even decide what kind of uh, dress to wear in the morning. Even the most simple decision is lead by emotion. And then we rationalize it. So if you hurt people and their emotion, you want the people won't come back to you again. And uh, so the question you answer is, how does it make you feel? How a brand does it make you feel? Emotions are so important that because we say the brand is a gut feeling, what we feel about the brand. Nike is great at telling a story. And uh, they are great because they, they, spoke, they speak about hope, promise, be yourself, achieve a goal. And they actually the, the button they push inside us is self-achievement. And uh, how many of you have seen some uh, Nike advertising and probably cried? I did. <laughs> so they are great because they tell you stories and you believe in, in what they say. And when you wear their shoes, you believe you can be one of them. Or Apple. I had never been online out of this uh, Apple store. I, I would never be so crazy, but uh, many people does. So this is uh, um, the Tokyo, the uh, in Tokyo, the line of uh, when they launched the mini iPad. 
And uh, why there is a line? Why is there, is there a line in out of Apple Store? Because people want to have that product. They want to, there is a desire on be, uh, be the first one having that product. So they design to belong not only to, to, not only to have that product, but also to belong to that, uh, to that kind of world, which is the Apple world. That we say before, it's innovative, it's all about design and, and uh, trust. And uh, how, uh, now a question for you. How does Joomla make you feel? I tell you how Joomla makes me feel. And I tell you what Joomla is for me. Joomla is uh, all about community, a community that travel all around the world and they spread the gospel everywhere, the Joomla gospel everywhere. And when I say everywhere, even places where internet, uh, people don't know what it is. They allow you to eat Joomla food or celebrate their birthday or special moment with the Joomla cake. They like to wear Joomla <laughs> <laughs> shoes or create Nick toys for uh, dead cats. I am a cat lady, but I don't know if they believe for a toy, but I, I want to contact the girl who did it. I can give it to my cat. So Joomla is all about the love around the community. And this is what makes Joomla different. And this is what we have to care about. But the most important thing is to create a, a tribal identity around Joomla. And a group of people, or true believers like us, that can really spread the gospel around the world. I want to finish my presentation with uh, this sentence that says that the brand is a living entity. The DNA of your company keep it alive. And this sentence is mine, and I haven't written any book yet. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Questions? Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Any questions? Mm. Frank, you always, but we can have a chat. But you can ask, of course. I think we, do we have time? I don't know. Ah, yes. <laughs> do we have time or? Yes? Okay, great. I was in time, good. 45 minutes, exactly. I'm really happy. So, any question do you want to ask me? Do you want any help to write the only next statement? Um, later. Later? Okay. So I was good. Yeah. What are you going to do in this afternoon session? Yeah, we are going actually, well, they want us to make something practical. So we are going to, uh, I, I personally will, uh, um,